Hi students, welcome with the mechanism of hormone action part 2. Before I start doing that, in the last video I had asked you adrenaline and noradrenaline from which amino acid? Is it tryptophan, phenylalanine, tyrosine or isoleucine? So the correct answer is tyrosine and I had said I would announce the name of top three correct students so who are they i got the first correct answer from tejashri well done second came from tejal very good the third one it came from amreen so all three of you very well done very well done very proud of you keep it up Right, and keep watching out for more questions in all my videos. This is a great method to learn and enjoy in the process. Fine, Vicha. Let's start with mechanism of hormone action. This is the slide which I'm going to explain to you. I had told you that hormones, they will act by two methods. Beta, maybe they will go and attach to certain receptors which are present on the surface of the cell membrane. Such receptors, they are referred to as extracellular receptors and it's mostly the water-soluble hormones which act in this way. They will generate secondary or second messengers like cyclic AMP which will go inside the cell and bring about the desired changes. This is what we discussed in part 1 of this. Now, today I want to discuss the second type of hormones which do not remain on the cell membrane or on the surface of the cell. These second type of hormones, mostly beta, they are the lipid soluble hormones what will they do? They will cross the cell membrane. They will go right into the cytoplasm. And in the cytoplasm, they will combine with receptors which we refer to as intracellular receptors. Okay? These intracellular receptors, they will combine with the hormone to again form a hormone receptor complex. This complex is able to directly enter into the nucleus and stimulate a specific gene to perform a function. Genes, guys, you are all aware, genes are made up of DNA. DNA is going to make mRNA which goes out into the cytoplasm and makes proteins. These proteins are the ones which will bring about changes in tissues. They might cause differentiation. They might cause growth, developmental effects. So this lipid soluble hormone has gone right into the nucleus and interacted with the genome to bring about specific desired changes. You know, most of these steroid hormones like estrogen, they are lipid soluble and they will act with the help of intracellular receptors. Okay, now you will very easily understand this diagram. Estrogen hormone, you can see it is crossing the cell membrane and forming the hormone receptor complex which is acting inside the nucleus activating certain gene which forms mRNA that forms proteins which bring about changes in the tissue growth and differentiation. So not difficult at all. It's easy. Okay. In case you have any doubts, please ask me in the comment box and I'll revert back as soon as possible. Okay guys. Right. This is a question on genetics, a very easy question, but it is short, short marks. Such questions, they frequently come in the competitive exams, even in your 12th class exams. So it might not be all that complicated in 12th class. How many types of gametes will be formed by an organism with genotype A, A, B, B, C, C, D, D, E, E? Oh my God. How to make such a big, big Punit square? Very difficult. 
how will we solve this question i'll be discussing in my next video learn neat tricks for genetics right please stay tuned if you haven't as yet subscribed beta it's not a compulsion your wish it's just that if you subscribe you will get notification whenever i upload the video you will very quickly receive notification right see you till then bye